Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the late one with myself, Silver and Sidio, and thank you so much for coming on. And uh, tonight we have a very interesting topic, uh, debate, which is on the whole topic of statues. The dismantling of statues or the retaining of statues. As you can see with the recent, um, what is happening in the UK, um, around the world, especially in America, the tearing down of the Coulson statue, which was thrown in the water, and um, some people say it's very interesting. It's a replica or uh, a sort of deja vu situation of what happened many years ago when slaves were also thrown into water as well. So it was like fitting for purpose. Many people agree, many people disagree. And it is something which is a, a need for conversation, totally need for conversation. So tonight, without further ado, I have two guests at present, and I'm supposed to have three, which we're going to have this discussion on this topic. Now, before we go, I'd like for you to also um, share the video, um, invite your friends as well. And um, first of all, I've got Molly Samuel, um, who's an IT teacher, worked for Homeless Charity. First person to win seven World Six European Gold Medals was Jamaica Jubilee Award for Excellence, Commonwealth Sports Award, the first woman to win the Sunday Times International Sportswoman of the Year Award, and Molly Samuel's MBE. Secondly, I've got James Singleton, a businessman, and something special about him, hairstylist. We were discussing earlier, how can I do my hair? How does he do Zoom with hair and all those sort of things? <laughs> and, 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 later on, and, and also, I'm joined also by um, my uh, uh, Mr. Dr. David Burton. Um, you have seen David many times. David can on the show already. We do a review as to what is happening regarding coronavirus and COVID after every discussion with the Prime Minister uh, number 10. So we have this discussion to give a lot of perspective to it, to the, the, the people out there. Now, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Hi. Can you, can you guys hear me, Craig? Right? Yeah. Hi. Well, good. How are you doing? Good evening. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. I might, I might mute you at different times, but first of all, I just want to say thank you guys for coming on and thank you for being a part of this um, debate as well. But first of all, I'd like to invite Molly just to share a bit about herself and also her views, her perspective as to A, the recent happenings in America, but also what is now being transpired in the UK regarding this dismantling and tearing down of uh, statues money um well there's not much to say about myself i'm very much a community person and i grew up in the 70s yes. um i grew up in the 70s where kids went into school and they sang you know there ain't no black in the union jack i thought that was a song i didn't know they was being racist and you know we're going to the zoo yes. those kinds of songs because one thing about my parents and i thank them to this day they told us you are British, you know, you are British and you speak English. And that's how I see myself. I'm very much a community person. I work with vulnerable people. With regards to what happened to George yes. Floyd, it's like I said on my post before, it's lynching without a rope. You know, at the end of the day, he's not, he's, he's the one that brought, it, you know, it come out on a world level and people realized what was going on in America. But there are other people who have experienced the same and died. Yes. No human being, I don't care what colour you are, deserve to be treated in that manner. Not at all. So, you know, I am glad that it, it sort of like stem, you know, um, black lives. But if we're being honest, it's all lives. It's not just black lives. Because I'm sure there have been yeah. white people who have been treated like that in the police hands. In terms of what's going on in Britain, I say this. I'm very proud to be British. And in terms of the statue, when Winston Churchill put out the call for the Asians, the Africans, the Caribbeans, and the Americans to come and defend fatish fatishism, sorry, they came with pride. They didn't need to come, they came with pride mm -hmm. and they fought the empire and Britain fought as one. They spoke. They spoke. We're in now 2020. These people have already said how proud they are to be. Yes. 
we know and I've heard about his racist comments and stuff like this, but that's neither here or here. The man stopped us having this, you know, he gave us freedom of speech, freedom of expression. So yes. that statue must remain. I'm sorry if uh, people disagree with me, but I think that statue mm. must remain for sure. And you're talking about the statue of Churchill. I can't hear you. you you're, you're, uh, can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Molly, yeah. can you hear me? Molly, can you hear? One second. Molly, can you hear me? Yep. No. No. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> let me see. Let me see something here. Hello. Molly, can you hear? Yes. Hello. No. Okay. She can't hear me. Okay. Molly, um, can you hear me? No, you can't hear me. Okay. Um, James, what is your what's your take on what is happening? I'll I'll speak back to Molly at the same time. James. Okay. Um. Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We can hear you. Super. Um, my take on everything that's happening is that regarding all of these statues, whichever one it is, you know, everything has an historic value. If the thing to learn from that historic, in this case, statue, is what was wrong as well as if there was anything right, then there is value on that because if you eradicate any signs of anything that went <clears throat> went on in the past, then how is anybody to learn about it or from it? If there's no statue of Edward Colston, you can't teach anybody about this man because he becomes unreal. You know, 50 years from now, you'll have people, you'll try teaching young black children. They were these men and they were slave traders of black people. Oh, who were they? Well, we can't show you them because all of their statues were destroyed. You know, it's a little bit, it, it becomes unreal, in my opinion. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> David, Dr. Dr. Burton, what's your perspective initial in the world process here? Yeah, I think I have to agree with much of what was being said um, uh, so far, really, um, in regards to the comments just on statues and history and teaching of history you know we, we can't eradicate history that's 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 a problem in itself um you 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 need to know your history in order to move forward and so eradication i don't i don't think is something that anybody i would hope would 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 justify i think that obviously when it comes to certain um historical monuments however there are certain things that we as a society do not condone Mm -hmm. And I would expect that sort of slavery is one of the things that is universally accepted to be um, a, a, a abhorrent act in itself. And I know that in regards to sort of the Colston statue, obviously uh, slave traders uh, are not something to be sort of glorified. But at the same time, we as a people, whether black, white or, or otherwise, need to know about the history and, and as, as such. So I, I don't condone the sort of um, bringing of the statue down it's happened and um, I think it should be um, placed now in a museum um, and, and that's my thoughts on that particular statue um, I, I, again I do not condone the bringing down the statue I can't say that you know I would you know, I would say anybody should be bringing these statues down but I yeah. think what's happened has happened and I think museums are places for us to learn that history um, as well as statues as well. You know, we should really be aware of the statues, the historical significance of statues um, and, and educate ourselves because I think that's a, a missing part to this jigsaw. Yeah. It's a bit of a patchy picture when it comes yeah. to and, um, and, and David, how, we, how, we view, how we view history. And David, let's stop you for a second there before I continue. Molly, can you hear me now? I can hear you now, but I've missed quite a bit. Yeah. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. We, we, okay. we, bought, we bought the time for you, no problem. We're gonna come back to you. David, if you can continue, welcome back for, for Molly, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, broadly speaking, I agree with everything that James has, has said, you know, um, and, 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 and I would also agree with Molly as well in regards to the, the statues of, sort of Churchill and such. Um, but again, the, the, the re-emphasized point, or two points that I think we could probably elaborate on a little bit later, is how we view historic statues um, and whether they are acceptable 
an acceptable universal norm. Okay, so I know that obviously Colston, um, that statue in itself, I would say again, re-emphasize the fact that slavery is abhorrent, and I think universally we all would agree that that that's something um, we all should do something about. And to have it, to have a statue, I guess that that signifies or at least looks at that aspect in people's eyes as um, as something that is 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 glorified. I know that he stood for more than than slavery, and obviously there was uh, the philanthropic point of view here that people may well share. But the slavery aspect led to that um, philanthropy. Um, that's the issue, um, I think. And and again, I don't condone the bringing down of statues, but I think he should now be placed in, in a museum. And I think that the second point I'm trying to make here is that in terms of history teaching, there's a lot to be said um, in terms of history teaching, um, because quite obviously there are a lot of statues that are around the UK that people are not aware of, that are yeah. becoming increasingly aware of. Um, and we need to focus on that part also. OK. Um, one of the things that I want to do today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and for those who are in Cyberland, um, is to also get your feedback and get your comment because at some point I'm going to want you to be interactive. I'm seeing comments coming up already and I'll just share one of them um, by uh, Mr. Scarrett who said, leave the statues where they are. And his, his, his reason is birds love to crap on them. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need to put that one up there. Leave them where they are. Where the crap on the floor. <laughs> that's, that's a very interesting point. And also, statues give meaning when you give them meaning. Statues have meaning only when you give them meaning. Now, I, I bring this point up here because the focal point is everyone is actually zeroing on these, these statues. But what is interesting is that I never knew of some of these statues. I never knew about um, Colson, and I never knew about, even somebody mentioned about uh, BBC, there's another statue there. Are, are we backing up, are we somehow giving um, attention to these things? Or if they were left there, they would have just been nothing. Uh, can I say something? Yes, yes. Um, like you, I'm learning the history of these statues. Edward Colston, I even remember his name. Yes. You know, 100,000 black Africans he imported into Britain, enslaved them. 20,000 of them sent to the Caribbean. On the way, the ones that died, he tossed them in the river. Yes. 12,000 children, African children, died. I do not want to be reminded of those histories. I do not want to walk past and not know that history um, while others do. And I think it's very important that the white people, the white British should not feel bad about those people's past. They should be, I agree with David, in a museum where people have the choice to go and learn about their history. They, when you see me as a black Brit, I'm proud. When I hear of these stories, it hurts because I'm thinking about my ancestors. So mm -hmm. these things, I don't think they should not be heard. They must be heard. They should be in a museum. And I'll say one more thing about history. If Britain had taught us our histories when we were at school and we were asking, well, what about our history? I don't think we'd have the level of disagreement in terms of racism that we have now. That's been the biggest problem. It must, people must know their history, whether it's nice or not. James, I, I need to ask you this question here. Um, and according to what Molly was actually saying now, what's your perception and your view as, when I invite you, on, when, you when you came on the show, I said, James, I'm so glad you're here, not just because you're white, but then I actually said, well, actually because you're white. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Now, now tell me now, um, these are part of, um, should I say, your heritage. But there's also one mm -hmm. thing that somebody reminded me is that not all um, British or English persons were part of the slave trade or families were, if anything. What's your perception? Do you, at this time, regarding all of this is happening, do you feel targeted? <clears throat> I, I don't feel targeted uh, most of the time, but to a certain degree, 
there's a slight element of that. And the reason is, is I feel strongly about this. I don't like to see anybody being treated badly and so on. But I sometimes feel like, well, it's not really okay for me to share my opinion or my opinion won't be as valued because I'm white. You know, and it's difficult because I feel just as strongly about the well-being of other people as anyone does. Do you know what I mean? It just it just so happens that this is a particular issue that I have only observed externally, thankfully only in the news. I've never particularly witnessed it. But um, it does become difficult when you consider that, well, I mean, and I've had that certain reaction, well, you don't know what it's like. You know, you don't know what it's like for somebody to call you the N-word. You don't know what it's like to be prevented from doing this thing, that thing, or the other thing because of the colour of your skin. Okay, I might not. But unless blacks, whites, Asians, and everybody sit down and have a conversation equally, you're not going to move forward anyway. So, you know, unless my opinion's as valued as the opinion of a black person who has been treated in a racist manner, mm -hmm. I can't help that person. And how can any white person help somebody who believes that, well, you can't understand me. You can't help somebody in that regard. It, it creates a divide, I think. Can I say something? Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say that there's only one way to sort this statue thing out, and that is through democracy. Mm. It's about a vote. It's got to come from the people. And James, you must never, ever feel that way because you're opinions are as valued as the black man, the white man, the green man. So you shouldn't feel that way. A lot of my friends feel like you and they shouldn't. They should not because, you know, we've got to remember that some of your ancestors also fought with ours to win this war. Proud. Be proud. Absolutely. <laughs> they're, 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 absolutely. I've, I've had a multi-culture group of friends my whole life. That's why I've never seen yeah. racism right in front of my face. I've never witnessed it. Yeah, um, I, I think to the point that um, James was speaking on there mm -hmm. in regards to sort of the maybe feeling a little bit less inclusive in the discussion, yeah. um, I think that's, you know, a, 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 obviously a disappointing feeling to, to, to have. But what I would say on that front is that there has obviously in this particular movement and we're switching gears here but in terms of the uh, sort of racism movement stroke black lives matter and um, you'll see that 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 has potentially changed um, over time in that it seems to be everybody is is obviously against the idea of of of, produ produ of police brutality and the effects of that so whether you're black or white or, or green as molly said you know, everybody's fighting together again in that in that cause, um, irrespective of skin colour. So I think that that, that things are changing, and, and and that change needs to occur in order to, to take a movement forward. And an interesting comment here by uh, Dan Murray was saying, "So what about those black people who are descendants of slave owners? How do you think they are feeling now?" You know. Because remember, like in Jamaica, there's a saying which our motto, out of many one people. Some people don't like it, but um, lots of people are, are mixed up. You know, people who have descendants, especially in Scotland. Many people have Scottish names. And I think, uh, I think mm -hmm. on that subject, um, Silvorn, you'd have to ask them how, how, how they feel, how, mm -hmm. how people generally feel on that, that, that particular topic. Um, we can speculate um, how others will feel, but everybody has to speak their own truths in that matter. Um, you know, uh, we've all shared our ideas about sort of the, 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 the monuments, statues, whatever you want to call them today on today's setting. But I think everybody is individual on that. And, and, that, and that individuality is, 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 is a beautiful thing because then we get to hear people's views on, on statues, on race, etc. And we get to talk and it brings people together to, to have that conversation as we, as we touched on. And I think that lack of conversation obviously leads to the breakdown in communication, the breakdown in, in the way that we view each one another. And that's the issue at hand. So we, we, we you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I know there's a lot that's been going on recently, um, but I'm more than hopeful that, you know, through, 
through the unfortunate passing of George Floyd, we are now around and, and, and able to have discussions that we haven't had before. And I'm hopeful that that will break down some of the barriers that would have existed previously as well. Um, I'm not saying that is a silver lining. I'm just saying that that is a consequence of, of the unfortunate passing of George Floyd. Okay, so therefore there, there's a parallel thing which is happening now, whereby as David said, it's a good opportunity to have a discussion. That's why we're having a discussion with um, James here, Molly and David. But at the same time today, what we see, what we saw on the road, is whereby the far right said they are coming to protect the statues from Black Lives Matters. And do you see this level of um, division which is happening at the same time? Molly, what, and, and the Prime Minister, and Molly, you can pick up on this, and the Prime Minister um, made a statement by saying, we are a civil society and that's not the way to do things. But at the same time, you're seeing democracy at work. Is it democracy? The, some are saying we protect the statues, some are saying tear down the statues. How do you? How do you I, I think we're losing. When when you go out and you protest and you're out to fight, you're no longer you're no longer acting in a democratic way. I believe. Look, I'm also the candidate for Brent, the GLA candidate, which I forgot to mention. And what I think the way out of all of this is for you know black people have to take responsibility for themselves as well mm. we talk about police brutality we talk about injustices of non, not e um, equality go for jobs where you can break down those barriers i'm going to start a register where we're going to have for people to register to join the police force if you want to make a decision in terms of equality making sure everything you've got to get involved in those areas so that is the way in which you stop those, those protests, get involved in the decision making. They're not doing nothing for black lives. Yeah. Not. In fact, they're, dis, you know, they're taking it away from what that set out to be. Mm. It's no longer about black lives. People are hijacking it. There is a strong debate here, and that is about you know, black people having equality. I don't want no one to give me anything. Yes. We need to change the attitudes of our youths. And let them know that they're needed you know, in certain ways where they can make major decisions in the future. I want to capture some more comments. One is very interesting here from Zoe Herdman, and this is very crucial. I came from a Quaker town whose people campaigned against the slave trade. It needs to be remembered that lots of white people campaigned against it. And that is something which I was saying when James was talking that. Uh, not all white people were a part of the slave trade. And, 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 and somehow, as Molly said, we, we, it is maybe important for white people not to, well, many people are saying white people is white people that, white people. But is that fair to say white people or to say those are part of the slavery family? <laughs> no, it's white people. At the yeah. end of the day, we've got to remember a lot of white people died uh, for slave slavery too. Yeah. You don't hear a lot of that. You know, it's white people. I know that a lot of my friends, they feel terrible. Uh, so, no, it's white people have no reasons to feel bad about what's gone on in the past. What is in the past is in the past. It's what's happening in the future. I think that is the debate. But we must remember, you know, a lot of white people died so black people, slaves, could escape. Yeah. Um, David, um this point here whereby Cyprian picking it, so can I ask, when all the statues go, what benefits will we have to are the building street names after plantation going to be changed? Three, ancestry of slave man owners, are they going to be banished? Four, what's the main issue? Now I find that very interesting because I was saying even the other day, I think where do we stop? That is for the perpetrator or those who want the statues to go. Do you change your name as well? That's a good question, Silvan. Very good questions. So, um, on the on the art of changing the name, yeah, I've thought about changing my name. You know, I, I need to do a bit more history from my birth and surname. Um, yes. All jokes aside, okay. All jokes aside. Yes. But in all seriousness, mm -hmm. I think in in this in this instance, yes, it can set a precedent. Okay. And that's why, you know, in my initial opening gambit, I said, I don't agree with the statues being pulled down. Colston mm -hmm. aside, I think there needs to be a debate that's opened up to discuss the history of these statues so yeah. that we can then, and, that, and that's a secondary point, which is learning the history. I think 
you know, getting away from that history, we can we can lull ourselves into a false sense of security. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 even if you tore down the statues, again, you you're losing that history. So, irrespective, there has to be a historical component to all of this, so we can re-educate ourselves. As I re-educate, educate ourselves from primary, because as Molly touched on, a lot of the things. And, and, and you know, history teaching in schools, we can't say that it's, you know, it's going to be 100% of the curriculum. That would be silly. But at the same time, I think there needs to be a, a discussion about the broader concepts of, of, of things that may well be a little bit more um, full part to talk about. You know? But we need to talk about those things because we need to break down those barriers. Mm-hmm. Now, in, in the opening, I also said that, I'm, I'm, you know, that it needs to be confined to the museums, you know, this, this mm-hmm. particular statue. And whether or not we believe university as a whole that slavery in itself is universally unaccepted. And I think most people would say that that is the case. So I've, my default fallback is if there is if there are statues out there that are in keeping with the constant history, then they should, the first and foremost, be discussed. And, 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 and if we feel that that is not a universally acceptable standard, they should be taken down and put in museums. That's my feeling. Now, when it comes to other statues that are out there, and we touched on with uh, uh, Churchill, I don't think that particularly is as black and white. It's, it's a gr- shade of grey, depending on which side of the void you stand on. Okay? So, in, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I don't think that should be taken down. Because yeah. there's, 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 there are people on both sides who will view that with, with, with different views. But I don't, again, going back to slavery, nobody can look, well, again, in my opinion, nobody can look at slavery as a, as a universally worldwide acceptable standard. And that's where I would draw the line and say, okay, well, if there are statues out there that are in kin to Colston, let's have that discussion and debate about it because we need to have the discussion and debate first and foremost. I think less of that discussion and debate is centered around statues like Churchill because I don't think, again, that is black and white. It's a more grey standard. Um, but the, the slavery in itself is abhorrent. Nobody agrees with that as a principle. And if, if we can move those statues to museums, keep the history and discuss that histor- historical relevance, then I think that's a movement forward. James, do you, do you think there's an argument whereby many years ago, the, the act of slavery was legal? And while these persons were doing their legal thing, which is the slavery, the transatlantic slavery movement, they were also building schools or creating um, opportunities as well. Is there any grounds that one can see for those statues to remain? Would you bring would you bring your child or your family and say, this is a slave master, a slave guy, slavery um, master from Bristol? Okay, now see, for me, I'm of the opinion that they should all stay where they are. And then each one represents, <clears throat> somebody said in one of the comments earlier, you know, it kind of symbolizes what you want it to symbolize, or it represents what you want it to represent, words to that effect. <clears throat> so Edward Colston's a good one, because I don't know the sequence of his life. I understand that he was a slave trader. I don't know huge details about him, he was a slave trader. But as uh, David uh, said earlier, he also did a lot of philanthropic things. So without getting into whether or not there's an argument that, ah, but he earned his right through philanthropy, I mentioned this to you earlier when we were discussing that I would be a guest. There's a lot potentially to learn from his statue about how it is that somebody can change. They can learn from what they get into. They can learn that even though it was okay in society to be a slave trader it was okay to make your money that way but uh, but actually through experience and learning as a human being developed into a different type of person that actually wanted to create opportunities for people you know and then even a statue of somebody if the bulk of their, their existence was terrible there is a history lesson to be learned there and there's a reason why that statue is there so it just detracts from it. For me, I think it's far too emotional to consider, look, it's a statue. It's a non-living, simple, physical object, which is there as a reminder of the past. Reminders of the past are simply that. It's a solid object. You know, why, start, why waste our time and money and effort on 
statues when it's just like, okay, well, what is the lesson from the statue? The lesson is this. Okay, well, it's most poignant in its place. It's not poignant to look at an Edward Colston statue, for example, in a university in Manchester. It's not relevant to Mancunians. In Manchester, we have a statue of Abraham Lincoln because he acknowledged the support that the people of Manchester showed anti-slavery by refusing to process slave picked cotton. You know, so why move it? Do you know what I mean? I understand people feel strongly and I can only try and guess as to how they feel, but you just teach the history that goes with it. It's not, it's neither praising it or not. You simply teach the history and that's all it is, is a lesson because it happened to nobody that's alive today and it was done by nobody that's alive today. But yeah. a lot of how we behave today comes from it. That's my opinion. Molly, go ahead. Yeah, but you must understand that it does affect people and it affects in the sense that I, these people were branded with his initial. That's very hard to, to, to accept in this day and age. And so, yes, I, can I can't understand that side of it. People mm -hmm. like that, I don't think we should be looking up to. I don't think, you know, our children should not have the choice yeah. to know that history. Put him in a museum. Mm -hmm. Do not leave this statue. I would, I, would, I would probably sat next to that statue and disagree with all that that man stood for. You know, we talk about what he has done, but you have to mm. remember how he achieved it. And it was on the back of black slaves. Mm. So, no, I do not no, want absolutely. statues like this. I do not want statues like this in a country, Britain, where I feel proud of. We are not a racist nation overall. But when you have statues like that, mm. and young black kids especially, or mixed race kids, or kids who have, you know, um, other in them, they're highly offended by that, and that can affect them emotionally. That can make them racist. Can, can I, I, think, I think, can I just add just one, oh, one, on last, one last thing? I, I can I just one thing? Oh, go. oh, go on, James, you go first. Go go. Sorry, if you, if you don't mind, just very, very... Yeah, go, go, James, go. James, on go that point. So what about, last point, what about I, as a white man, could happily leave that statue there not because that that is a man to be admired not because anything that he achieved was worth an accolade but because i can take responsibility for the fact that i don't want to hide from that i don't want to hide that away because i am not ashamed of it because i come from a line of people who have learned from that and i have friends who society has evolved because of people who have learned from that and I want it to be there as a reminder of that. It's not about looking up to it. It's let's not hide it. Why hide it? I, I, yeah. I can see where you're coming from, James. Yeah. And I think yeah, that, that hiding of, of, of history is, is to be frowned on, but we don't hide history in, in, a, in a museum when it comes to, to, yeah. um, to matters of, of, of art and, and history. And, and I think we've got to really ask the question, mm. why do we have monuments? What are monuments? Uh, a, a, a significant what do they signify and uh, what i would say is that they're to, in, in my opinion and 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 and, I'm, and i would say that uh, there's probably an opinion that's shared mostly it's there to inspire generations to to sort of emulate that hero and looking at sort of events that that that, that, that monuments you look to, to drive and inspire you know that, that, that that's what it's there for and and to to reflect the, the society at the time and i guess you know at the time, Colston was somebody to be revered because he was pouring money into to Bristol. But the, the problem it is the, the way that that was done. Yeah. And if we're going to have that statue there as a focal point, as a hero to be celebrated, not everybody will look at that as a, as a hero to be celebrated, as you said, but people will still look at it in that way. And that's kind of a slap in the face of, of people who are in, within this country who disagree with that, whether white, black or, again, I keep using white, black or green. Um, and to look at that as a, as no, a, as a no. standard, and that's 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 my issue. I think that we've got to think about why why we have statues in in this country, um, and and if we look at and identify the statues that we have, the war memorials, the, the Winston Churchills, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they're there for us to 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 respect, to look up to, 
to, to, to signify a moment in history where there's a degree of, of, of positivity that will, will come out of it. And, and, and the, the positive, I don't think, outweigh the negatives with regards to this, the, the, this particular Colston statue. So, that, so David, you'll agree then with Sadiq Khan for a review of statues in London, because he's focused on London. As, as, I've, as I said, I think from a slavery point of view, I, I keep falling back to it, and forgive me, mm. from a slavery point of view, if our acceptable oh. standard is that we do not agree with slavery, then I think those statues that would represent that as a, as a, as a, as a viewpoint have to have a, a review and then we go from there as to regards to what we do with those statues. That's where I'm coming from. Uh, that's well, I think that's because, uh, that's because that is something that is not universally accepted. I, I, would, I, would agree, I would agree with Sean Bailey. We need a democratic process where the people decide. You know, I think, James, that is the way, that is the way forward. Our only problem with that, with people deciding what they want in terms of the statue in their community, is that some communities, okay, ethnic, the ethnic minorities are smaller than the others. So there's going to be a problem there. But I think it has to be the people's decision. It must be done de democratically. But, like, Molly, Molly, when you say it must be done democratically, you also say that, you mm -hmm. also say that there is a the, the disparity regarding the numbers with the minorities, yeah. according to the, the white people, if anything. And people are also saying now that they are feeling like the minority is actually coming into the country, or so for argument's sake, um, turning upside down, make it into not what it is or not what it was. Cyprian Pitkin says this point here, how will a statue affect someone emotionally? Was it affecting you 10, 20 years ago? I go further, another question. I'm just going further with my statement here now. I, I said something to someone today, because I'm in the middle with this whole discussion. I said something to someone today. Maybe it's an opportunity for someone to create a business by doing tours, taking young children to go to these different areas, statues, whatever, and speak to them about what history is about what this person did at that time because at one point these persons were revered then no they're not revered then 20 years later there's something happens you know like the, the you know like the, the land of the ape where the apes don't come and take over it, it, it starts to change so so the question is where do we stop or where do we stop i mean there must be a point where we stop because if you start which has started already you're going to have to start to dissect everyone. Somebody goes, well, Mandela is very, very, very. Well, um, uh, what's his name? Gandhi was racist. And there are Gandhi statues all over the place. And people start to dissect. So what is what is that measuring stick? Ladies and gentlemen, even on this side, and, and those are talk for, I mean, what is the measuring stick that you'll use to measure this? I because everybody- One thing to say. And I think this is a good example because what we're saying is that monuments are there to be proud of. Okay, what about Auschwitz? Do you think that the site of Auschwitz should be demolished and built on and we keep some bricks and stick them in a museum? Do you think that would do it justice? Yeah. You know, from another viewpoint, I'm trying to cross exactly how it is that I'm viewing it. Because if you take a statue and stick it in a museum, there's more likely of an opportunity to learn about it if it's in the streets mm. as opposed to in a museum. I never go to museums. I know very few people that go to me. Yeah, but but I know the Abraham Lincoln statue in Manchester because I walk past it all the time. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a part of... That is, that is a proud part of history, but either way... I only know that part of Manchester's history at all because I get to walk past that statue. You know, good or bad, good or bad, the good, the bad and the ugly, if you stick it in a museum, the vast majority of people are never going to see it. Yeah, but what you must understand... And um, definitely not people like. 
Yeah, but what you must understand, the people of Germany decided what statue is saying as coming from an area going, oh, wow, you know, this is an area where this was once, the, but from this start of history, we turned it into that. Okay. Uh, are we hearing each other well? James? No. 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 It's breaking up quite no, a lot there, Let's start on James there. Um, um, it, it, this seems to be a, a, a very, uh, yes, yeah, somebody's breaking up. This seems to be a very toxic subject and, and a toxic issue. And we have seen what has been displayed on the streets today in the UK. Yeah, I, I think that what happened today um, has no right to happen. And, um, you know, the police do a brilliant job. As a youngster, I probably would have said, oh, I don't like them, because I would have seen on the street, I remember the first time coming out of my house with my brother at the age of 11, and they just pulled his trousers down, stop and search. Yes. But then again, as an adult, I've worked with the police as an appropriate adult, where you sit in the police station and inform these young people of their rights, and they do a fantastic job. At the end of the day, they're doing their job out there, and I think that anyone who abuses the police Okay, they should have the strong arm of the law. They're doing their job. We are lucky to have policemen and women like this in this country. Think of America. <laughs> Think of what's happening in America. We have good police officers, not 100%. And yeah. I think that at the end of the day, there is no justice and brutalization. Do you think, as, as Carl Pike says here, I, I want to grab as much uh, comments because those persons are part of the guest list as well. But there need to be more black statues and monuments. Um, all those statues then to sort of uh, overshadow, to overwhelm the negative, let the good cover the negative. So bring more black statues. Do you think that's one of the ways forward? Me? Me? Yeah, now everyone, I'm putting that out there. <laughs> I don't think you should just put up statues for the sake of color. I think that somebody who has done great things in their life or for this country i don't care what color they are they should go up but no you shouldn't you know there's only 40 white tro um, statues we need another 30 blacks it doesn't work like that mm. you know we need statues of people who inspire the country and that is colorless it's about their achievement not the color of their skin and 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 jay um David and James, I'll put this one to you. And, and you can come in after, um, but this is crucial. Are we talking way forward? Isn't the purpose of history to ensure we don't make the same mistakes again? Most, so, most definitely. And again, um, James, I really struggle to hear much of the argument there. I picked out key words, so do forgive yeah. me. Um, I might be misquoting. But I think you mentioned um, our switch. And, you know, that in itself is a museum. Um, so I wouldn't be looking to, to bring that down. There's the um, there's the um, so sort of Cape Coast uh, in Ghana. That's again a, a, a place that you can visit in terms of the slave trade if, if one wanted to. So those are museums in themselves, and I'm not looking to bring those down. I think the point I was trying to make was statues and monuments. And again, this the reason I answered that in, in this way is because all of this needs not to be brought down. It just needs to be focused in regards to where we place monuments and how we afford the time and effort to teach history. And I think history is key and essential to, um, to basically um, educate ourselves um, and, and to give us um, all of the um, momentum to, to, to sort of drive discussion and dialogue. I do not want any form of history um, torn down. Um, I just want people to be able to refocus their efforts in that regard. And, you know, again, I, I keep touching, teaching, touching on this point, this has re-energized our, our, our discussion. We've learned now more about Edward Colston than we would ever learn in our, yeah. our lives. Sure. And I'm not saying it's a, a positive thing to bring this this monument into the the, <coughs> the, the, the bank of in, in terms of uh, Bristol, but we have now educated. We're, we're, we're forcing ourselves to educate ourselves. Maybe we've got time. We've got downtime because of COVID. Um, I had to get COVID in there. Um, maybe we've got the downtime to, to, to sort of uh, refocus our energy just because of that. But um, in essence, <laughs> we have now been able to open that discussion. And again, the history issue, um, we've really got to refocus on. And I want a positive, driven history 
uh, education in this regard. We, we've really got to get to grips of how we teach our youngsters. Because Molly touched on a really, really good point earlier, which was if we had the education of these particular statues, monuments, history, etc., etc., not just on slavery, because slavery isn't just about black, black people. It's not, we didn't start from slavery. There's yeah. more to it than that. It's more contextualized than that. If we had that history and everybody had that history, we may not be in the same position we are today, many, many years down the line. I don't know when Molly went to school, I can't remember what she said, but many, many years down the line, we might not have had that discussion today to the yeah. same extent. I'm not saying we can eradicate um, the, 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 the prejudice that, that exists, the racism that exists, but we can look to try and shape our society positively. Um, and, and again, I keep coming back to it. History should not be wrapped up in a bubble and put, into the into the river yeah. 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 those things in museums yeah. good good well ladies and gentlemen um we're on the last leg of the show now and, and as i said to um uh james and molly how long can they stay is one always okay and it's <laughs> well this is something which is going to go very quick and time is mm -hmm. already upon us one of the things uh, uh, those on instagram as well um you know i'm glad that you're hearing and that you're listening you can also go on to my page silver and tv I would like to also ask this question now to, to, to James Singleton, who is there, Molly Samuel, MD, David Burton. Uh, for the persons who are listening and watching and commenting, answer this question for me. Should the statues stay or go? Just write stay and go. I just want to do a little thing. And those who are watching on the replay, you come back later, stay or go. Just write that word, stay or go. Stay if you want them to stay or go if you want them to go and give your reasons as well. Now, Mike Cricket mentioned, asked this question, who is going to drop this list and who is going to vote? And Molly, that, that points to you because you said a democratic process. Mike is saying, who is going to drop the list and who is going to vote? Because well, if, if, if the figures and the numbers add up in a certain way and people are going to vote according to race line, whatever, you know? Yeah, I, I don't but, that, yeah. Yeah, look, it needs, like David said, to have a debate in that community. And then it's for that community, the council, whatever, to draft up how that voting will take place. I believe in a democracy. I believe that people make the decisions in their community. They choose who they want in their community. So they should have first say what statues go into their community. So. It's the democratic process method I want. I want people to decide, vote on it. So therefore, in Bristol, you're talking about uh, people from Bristol to vote on Coulston, and anything. Well, that one is different. <laughs> that one is different. <laughs> you say no vote. You say no vote is needed. Well, you know, at the end of the day, that's my personal view. But then if I'm going to talk about having a democracy, yeah. I have to stand with what it stands for and that's yeah. people make that decision yes uh, james what's your perspective james um um i think i think i've already made it quite clear but but like for me i think it's important when you're concerned to move your personal feelings about what what you experience today day from um, what happened in the past because and i don't mean to be offensive to anybody here but, but the, and the edward colston example is a great example yes. right but the fact that one person that some people find it offensive to from site the historical value of it to teach about anti what a terrible yeah. terrible man he was branding beings and where mm. it is rooted it is rooted in Bristol in this case where it lives that is where the lesson should be taught because if you don't like the statue don't go to it it's the same 
again, I, I hope I'm not being offensive, but if you put that statue in a museum, mm. if you don't want to see the statue, don't go to the museum. Yeah. J James. What difference? Yeah. James, can you hear me? It geographically meant to teach people, but monuments are to be revered. James, James, James can you hear point. me? Yeah. James, can you hear me clearly? You know. James, can somebody you hear me said something earlier. Hear me? There are not enough statues of black. Okay, James, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Molly you to come back. A good point on that. I'm gonna ask you to come back. But what here. about if okay. next to you? Okay, we, we're having a slight hiccup with James, but he's gonna come back in because I told him what to do in the event if we got um, any distortion. So he's gonna come back in shortly. Um, yes, now, now what's the way forward? And this is the last bit I'm gonna go on to now. Jay, David, what's, what's the way forward? Because it is very clear before us that there is a, a toxic issue. The UK is being, <laughs> somehow there's a ripping up part of the soul of the country to a certain extent. It's a reality. It is, it is facing us and we, can't, we cannot um, deny the fact. The, the Black Lives Matter issue, the, the whole issue with George Floyd, it does raise up a lot of things. People are hurting. I've seen so many videos of persons who are actually going through trauma now uh, at, at, at this time. How can one navigate through this? And as a doctor as well, put on that hat. How can one navigate through this to get an amicable conclusion? Sure. So, you know, in any form of, um, of fracture, there has to be a direct level of communication and dialogue. And I think what's happening at this moment in time uh, at, at both ends of the extreme is, is detrimental to us having that open dialogue because it moves the focus away from what actually matters, which is open discussion. To have people on both sides um, really, jump, really jumping on the idea of, of trying to you know, mess up a, 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 a direct um, kind of communication channel is to me uh, really abhorrent in itself because it, it detracts from our, our, our discussion. So what needs to happen is that we need to re-energize and refocus our efforts collectively um, to completely you know, knock the idea that there needs to be any form of violence against police at these protests, that, that people are there at these protests to cause anarchy and, and, and chaos. And, and essentially step on, step in the way of an actual movement that is there to progress our society positively. So that's the, the, the first challenge that we as, uh, as a society really need to galvanize behind and, and, try, and, and try and reduce the, the, the attention that's driven to, to these extremes. Because, you know, focusing today, for example, on, the, on, on all of the mishaps that went down in, in London, is, is, is not really key and essential to the way that we drive forward this discussion and open dialogue. So that's the first thing that we really need to do, acknowledge the fact that these guys on the extremes are, are non-essential to our, to our mm -hmm. um, dialogue, our movement, our, 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 our want and desire to have open, open discussions. And I think then the second thing we've, we've really already touched on is, is making sure that we don't create a void in history, because that's the, that's the worry here, that we create voids in history by putting things in section in the cross. And unfortunately, I couldn't hear James uh, James earlier, so hopefully we'll be able to hear a little bit more about what he, he had to say earlier um, uh, and, and, then, and, then, and then go from there. But those are my two points, I think. Completely, number one, knock on the head the idea that we condone this kind of rhetoric from both extreme party sides of, of this discussion, whereby there's this want and desire to, to focus on on fighting and not have a have a have a discourse. That's the first thing. The second thing we need is an acknowledgement that we won't put this history, this historical significance, in a box and not refocus, not, not 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 have that as something to comment on in the future. And and Molly, what's your way? What do you say is the way forward now, as to how this is addressed? The way forward is about providing solutions. Yes, Black Lives Matter. Black, white, Asians, everybody came out. So they recognized that there was an issue. As I said, for me, it's about employment, making sure that we have more black uh, people in the police force. 85% of our police force is white. 15% of that is ethnic minorities. 
So this is an area where we need to encourage people, you know, this is where they need to be. So it's about elevating themselves into positions where they can make a difference and get involved in that debate. Before we move forward, I, I, I must also apologize to all those, all our white British counterparts who feel bad about this. You don't need to feel bad, you know, we don't need to feel bad. But that is the way forward. The way forward is we need solutions to what has been identified and agreed by the people is wrong. And that is inequality of black black people. That's why it's called Black Lives Matter. Yes. And and, and Not Jane, all black matters, quite sorry. frankly, but that yeah. is what it's about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and and James, what, what do you see as the way that you would if you're at that table? as a part of the team to drive the solution forward for an amicable way forward. What would you say, sir? You know, I've, I've discussed this type of idea with friends and I, I seem to be universally disagreed with. <laughs> um, but for me, um, the way forward, part of the way forward, because everything that's been said so far covers everything that I agree with. I've got nothing to add to that. Mm. But the unfortunate truth is you also have to be willing to allow people who are racist have their say. Because, mm. again, I spoke to you earlier, there is the film Best of Enemies. Yes. And the leader of the Ku Klux Klan becomes best friends with, I forget the first name, but her surname was Atwater, Ms. Atwater. Now, yes. that came because they both felt free to say what they wanted to say. You know, any violence in the background, ridiculous, obviously, but people need to be free to say what they want to say. It can't be punishable by law or by violence to have an opinion because no one will ever learn that their opinion is wrong if they hide that opinion. Never. They can't. I, and I and I do recall that show as well. I watched that show um, late in the night one night, whereby I saw what happened at the end, where the, the leader of the Cocos Clan actually did not agree with what he was doing for years. It's like something chipped in it, and himself and the lady became good friends eventually. I think it's I forget what's her name, the lady that acted. Um, well, you know, she's a great black black actress. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, you have seen um, and you have heard and you have watched, and it seemed to be regurgitating what you may also know that there's Houston, there, there's a problem, and what we have seen from today mm. in in London depict and show what can be if this is not managed properly. So therefore, it kind of fights fire with fire. Black Lives Matters, far right coming out and say let's clash. I'm going to protect the statue. I'm going to tear down the statue. I understand that there's a list of 60 statues or more, not maybe 600 statues or more, which is um, set out whereby people are going to attack them, pee on them. And what is happening now is a level of disrespect, what many people are saying. But how do we go forward? Mike Rickett said, who is going to draw up the list of statues? Who is going to vote? How do we actually decide which one stay or which one goes? Should I stay, should I go? That's a classic question that we need to ask ourselves. And, and from my perspective, looking on the outside, looking in, I've got a view, and this is just my personal view, I'm going to put it in the mix, is let them stay. But let them stay, but with education. And that's why someone said to me, great idea, maybe someone can take this as a business, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Let it be a teaching moment, if anything. Could be, I'm not saying to be. Get somebody to start doing some tours of these different places, teach. We talk about teaching black history to our children in this country, but maybe we've got to take it in our hands and say, these are teaching the moments. That's just my view, it's my perspective. Somebody said, has it emotionally scarred you? How has this touch scarred you? How has it hurt you? Those are questions we've got to ask ourselves. Is it that we need to have more of a self sense of identity? Uh, and there's a part in the Bible that talks about have no image about myself, if anything, which is God, and those who are God-fearing, and those who are offended, I, I, you know, I don't apologize for it because of my fearing, or I might trust in God. But the point is about, why is an image, and this is the question we're going to ask ourselves, why is an image, a statue, 
have that impact so fundamentally upon our lives? Mm. That's the question we're going to ask ourselves. I don't know the answer. I'm just giving a perspective. Molly gave me a perspective. James gave me his perspective. And Dr. Burton gave me a perspective. And I'm sure many persons on the side here um, have given me a perspective. But the most important thing that I see is that we've got to navigate somewhere through because guess what? We're all in this together, not in the political sense, but we live in this mm -hmm. we live in this world together and we have to work together. We have to live together because we don't want ourselves to be ripped apart. And that's my perspective. Is that fair, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Very yeah. Yeah. So, but isn't that what Churchill took us to war for? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. And expression. Yes, yes. So, so ladies and gentlemen, on um, guests, as I said, if you came on last and if you're coming on later or whatever like that, just answer this question. Should they stay or should they go? And, 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 and um, give your reasons as well. And for those on Instagram, remember to look over. And this con this conversation is going to go on because somebody was saying we're the young people. I, I think I'm the youngest of all of us here now. I mean, I'm the millennial. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> and so I've, 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 got, I've got some young people next week, maybe some 15 and 16 year old um, young young ladies to come on for uh, the chaperone is going to uh, maybe next week to really discuss this matter and just get different perspectives. So I, I want to thank you guys very much for coming on and thank you for a fantastic show. And um, ladies and gentlemen, um, it was a pleasure. Thank you, Molly. Um, yeah. was, thank you, James. And thank you, Dr. Burden. Any last word, guys? Anything? Thank you very much. I just, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, David, Molly, Sylvan. Thank you. Thank so you. Great, great thank you, guys. And, uh, thanks and good evening. Cheers.